is a Cosmic Octave original podcast. Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. I'm, not weed. me. I'm or, married. Yeah, well, I'm married. Jake. Yeah, do that. Yeah. I'll pay a lot of job here. Jake and Tyler. Fantastic. Yes. See, wow. that's how you right start every bat. episode. Just get it in there. I could just do it live. Yes. yes! No, yes! it's not even live. We're recording, so now you're fucking live. <laughs> <laughs> we're grifting you because we're not live. Episode number 93 of Off Panel Off Top. Do- you know what? I'm Jake. That's Tyler. This is the ultimate twist of our show is that we're the gr- real grifters. Why? Because we're saying we're live, but we're not. Think of the fucking comedy! That's what I said. Nice. <laughs> it's the pause. Oh, side note. Yes. Did you see the trailer, uh, Next Goal Wins? No. That's the mo- mo- new movie from... Cheeky Wachiti. Oh. So. oh, what's it about? Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Yes! All right, let's get into Christ it. Christ on a fucking cracker. Wow. <laughs> I could write a book about what you know. Yeah, book is the Bible. About Christ on a cracker. Yeah. Uh, All right, Tyler, we're bringing uh, back a segment. Oh! I'm so excited. I'm not. <laughs> What's in my mouth? Shh. We got it to do it for us. What's in my mouth? What's it taste like? Is it salty? Uh, all right. So, um, we have a uh, what's in my mouth this week is uh, one of those fantastic Mountain Dew <coughs> um, flavors sorry, that sorry. keeps coming out. You're fine. Um, and this one's called Summer Freeze, and it, it shows like a, a rad looking, uh, like he's. This popsicle is fucking oh, oh, ripped oh, oh, off his ass. Why are you describing the label? Nobody cares. Um, he's ripped off his hey, ass. Man. And he's like, dude, drink me, bruh. And it smells like a fucking rocket pop. So let's do this. this. This is one of those flavors you're like, this is designed for two reasons. And this is why Mountain Dew exists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to hook teenagers <laughs> with their fancy labels. Yeah. And two, this is going to make a delicious vodka bomb pop. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. You're going to like the way that drinks. You're going to like the way you feel. <laughs> That's delicious. I just splattered all over myself. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I laughed so hard. I splattered. It tastes like a bomb pop. Mm. Mm. It does, yeah. Mm, yeah, mom, Bob. Yeah, I mean, we know what it really. It kind of just tastes like they added a little bit sh- more sugar to their uh, to their voltage I don't know flavor. Why that was so fucking funny to me, but I I literally shat my. It's because the music perfectly stopped. Head right out of my. But again, if you mix this with some alcohol, it's like crack cocaine. Bad yeah. news. Crack cocaine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, as far as um. Yeah, as far as the taste goes. Yeah. If I'm going to rate it, you know I'm, I'm going to go you with... You know what's the real... Yes! That's my rate. Me rating. too, me too. We get a double. You know what's the real gateway drug is yes! Mountain Dew. Yeah. Because I started drinking Mountain Dew, and after a while I was like, you know... Well, have you had the... Uh, it would be cooler if I was really high drinking this. And that's how I got started smoking weed. It's also funny to me that Mountain Dew has like this idea of... Understanding who they are, so like they've always been like extreme, you know, extreme Not sports. Always, and a, but the nineties, yeah. Since you've been Jesus along. Christ, Mister Goody Two Shoes. When people think of Mountain Dew, they don't think of the hillbilly looking dude I on know. the label. I used to think of the glass bottles that we would get up and drink in North Dakota. Th- everybody thinks of the snowboarding, skateboarding, well, now, extreme sport yeah, now. Yeah, death now. defying stunts yeah, now. of Mountain Dew. Yeah, now. But uh, yeah, now stop. But but now they've also cornered the more the market on uh uh fuck that gas stupid. stations because now that you got Casey's has its own Mountain Dew flavor and uh, Quick Stop has its own uh, Mountain Dew flavor it's just great. it's just you know I think one of the uh, yeah, anyway. one, one of the one of the um, it's, it's good it's underrated tasty. fun things to do when you go into 
different grocery stores, like in different parts of the country from where you live, is going to like, you know, like here we have Hy-Vee basically, but there's places that have like Kroger's and whatnot and, you know, different supermarkets. It's fun to go in there and be like, what is their Mountain Dew flavor called? Mountain Lightning. That's M- high V. Mountain precipitation. Right? Like everyone is different. You know, you got like do time. You got you got mountain fresh. Do that's all it is. Anyway, moving on. None of that shit. Yeah. All right. No more. Makes no more gassy. fun, Makes Tyler. Now it's serious. This is a serious show for serious people. You're fucking whatever. We got a lot to talk about. First thing we want to talk about, we're doing something fun this weekend and might have the way I'm seeing it is we'll probably have do things over the weekend and then maybe get things up on the YouTube channel by Monday yeah. or Tuesday. Jesus Christ, man. You know, but you we agreed that you gotta let me finish saying it before mm. you do the yeah. You gotcha. know this. I'm we sorry. rehearsed this. Yeah, I know. Tyler. Anyway. Yep. He's right though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, so what are we doing, Tyler? You know more about this than I do. Okay, you so, kind of set this up. So. Well, uh, so my brother uh, is at this thing called the DemiCon. It's at the, uh, um, uh, it's here in Des Moines. And uh, I, I was going to give you the address and, you know, stuff, but you won't be able to go because by the time you hear this, it'll be over. Like, you know. No, it won't. This will go up on Thursday. Tomorrow? Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't I not put it up to I don't know. Um, it's at the uh, Merle Hay. Well, the other, uh, but I'm saying the stuff yeah. at the con will be. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's uh, my brother does, has been making comic books since before I was born. He's got a new one coming out called Ectoron versus Des Moines. Um, it's a very loosely uh, based, or it's a very loose allegory of some of the things that have happened in our state house, uh, uh, told through the story of kaiju fighting in Des Moines. Yeah. It's exciting. I like it. A lot of watercolors. Carter's done more watercolors, uh, which I he previously had mostly been using kind of computer enhanced art. Um, and what I mean by that is like he takes uh, he 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 filters his art kind of through a um, through like a Photoshop type type thing or whatever. Yeah, well, everybody does. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. No, but but, yeah. um, but it's kind of cool because it's been a long time. I think watercolors are kind of more back to basics or something he's never really worked with a lot, um, and I know it was kind of challenging for him. So uh, 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Uh, it's it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's other people there. It's a big convention. It's not just for my brother, but yeah. um, I get to do Which a Which is panel. interesting because it's like this is like a smaller one, and then there's Des Moines Con. Mm-hmm. In the next, in like literally a month after that, yeah. in June. So I'm not, um, sorry, I interrupted. No, you're fine. Uh, but um, Jake and I will be there, and I get to moderate a panel, which basically it's it's basically me and him. I, I'm going to talk to him about his new book, and we're going to talk about different things. About you know, I I plan to ask him about uh, when we had the, you know the kaiju. We had these uh, Godzilla and um, um shogun warriors uh these plastic things that were taller than we were uh, uh when we were like you know five six and they were just really really cool and, and i plan to be like hey you know what do you how do you feel about you know kaiju and stuff <laughs> i have to think kaiju of, what's your opinion i have to think of a lot better questions <laughs> yeah that's not a good start i'm I, my confidence is waning no i already got my introduction <laughs> uh but what am i gonna ask him eh. Why didn't you ever give me back that five dollars you told me you were going to when we were when we were kids? You son of a bitch! Well, I asked Why him. Why are like, you southern? I asked point? him. I, I asked him um, how political he wants me to get because he's like, well, first let's see if there's an audience. I was like, is there going to be a Q and A? He's like, let's see if there's anybody there. Yeah. Um, but Do you want me to be there for a Q and A? Oh, oh, my hand up, laugh, it's like, no. ah, yes, Jake. Um, I, I, I don't know, uh, but I mean, I don't know how, if he wants me to ask about that. He said really no, unless it kind of goes there, but, you know, God, I'm trying to think of some stuff that I'm going to ask him, because I... Well, don't give it away. No, I'm saying, like, when he told me about it, and I was, I jumped at it, of course I want to moderate a panel with my brother, that's awesome, but I figured it would be kind of conversational, like him and I talking about his book. Instead of me just interviewing him, you know, so yeah, we'll just approach it that way. That's the there's way no rules, are there? Do whatever you want. I don't know well, what, what the is rules are. You you. Wow, that was beautiful. Thanks, man. That was wow. That was you. I'm hey, just. I'll that be, was all you, buddy. Thanks. I just uh, followed your lead. Uh, 
<laughs> I'll be there uh, uh, as well, as Tyler mentioned. And uh, I don't know. It'll be fun. I haven't been to a con in like three years, two or three years. Well, no, the, no, mm. four years. I think the last one I went to was O Comic Con back when I lived in Omaha. I went to Wizard so. Con, the first one here in Des Moines, is it, which is was Wizard Con just Des Moines Con or now? sixteen. I don't know. Because they kind of stopped doing Wizard Con, and now there's Des Moines Con. I don't know. Well, a lot of that was like COVID and shit, though. Yeah, but it, but Wizard Con was almost like on. every other year. Like it wasn't. Yeah, I, I, I after the first one, I didn't really go. I knew it was still going on. Um, I love going to the local shows. But one of the things that I think I is really cons. fun is that you have been involved with my music since the beginning. Very small amount. I wear uh, sure. I wear. If you want to say that, I am aware. No, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm. A, I I always downplay it. Because I don't. That's do, fair. I didn't do very much. Well, you don't have to tell them that. <laughs> I will tell whoever I dang <laughs> well please. Uh, um, what I was saying is that you've been involved from the beginning, helping me record and everything, and my brother has been involved, obviously from the beginning with the shirts and the and the logos and the and the covers. But you guys have never met. And I intend to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you keep trying to get me to go to this con. I'm not doing it, buddy. But uh, so yeah. I, I, I think what we're gonna try and do is maybe a quick little, you know, chat with you and Carter, and I'll kind of moderate that too. Um, so you know, you guys don't, you know, start, you know, fighting over Star Trek and Star Wars or something. I don't know. I could care less about Star Trek. Let me tell you. What? I never watched it, so I never really. Cared. You never watched Star the Trek. Only Star 4, Trek. The I Voyage am, Home. Oh God. When's Whoa. the one when they're saving the whales? That's that one. That's the best one. Oh, God. What? Isn't it, this is my problem. If you have a franchise that has, what, six movies? Six? Like, outside of the... Like out, 12, out, actually. Outside of now. the J.J. stuff. Not counting the J.J. stuff. I'm just saying. Outside of the J.J. stuff, they have ten. Including Nemesis. Ten. Yes. It says a lot to me about your franchise as a movie franchise if... Well, only the even numbers are the good movies, or yeah, the the odd ones are bad ones. You only you can only like Wrath of Khan and fucking uh, the whale one that you were talking about. I just I'm just joking. I don't. They are all pretty. Let me bad. tell you this right now. Let me tell you this right now. Star Trek continuity. Is if stupid. you like Star uh, Star Trek and that's your bag, that's your bag. I'm just saying. For me, I think it's hard to get someone into Star Trek fresh. And it'd be like, this is it. Cause At this point, probably. Well, because you... But this is what's... The we're getting in a weird tangent about to, Star Trek. Yeah, but, but, and, uh, and that's what our show is called. Off Pair, Off just, Topper. I'm just saying, from Jesus. my perspective, as someone who's never really been into it at all... Um, Jumping on now the JJ would be a tough, one, yeah. I think the J.J. ones, however you might have your opinions about that mo- those movies, I think the J.J. ones did a good enough job being a more... A more appealing to a, a guy like me who's never really invested I'm in it. I'm totally cool with what J.J. did to Star Trek. Like I the idea, fucking hate what he did to Star Wars, but I'm okay. I, like, I love what he did to I Star love, Trek. What, I thought it was really smart to make that first movie being like, no, this is an alternate. This is off. This is That was brilliant. This isn't TNG. This isn't the original stuff. It's its own timeline. And I thought that, yeah. And, and to have Leonard Nimoy connect it, that was cool. Like, I really dug it. And then they really lean this in. This is bad comedy. And you're right. They lean into it in the second movie, Into Darkness, and I dug it. They gave me the most you know, obvious I will say plot this, twist though. ever, though. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. Whatever. I like, Again, that's someone who's never it's really a, watched Star Trek. It's a good, good, you know, it's a good So your fun. brother and I will not talk about Star Trek because I feel like I would insult him because I know how, I know how passionate... Star Trek fans. He's are. not as Star. No, we're way more Star Wars than Star Trek. I mean, we like Star Trek, but yeah, I I think Carter and I hew pretty close. He might be more into Star Trek than I am actually, but not by much. I'm willing to like look at like uh, again. I don't know. People have mixed this, and this is also the problem with the internet. I say as I have a show on the internet. There. Uh, you have so many different opinions, which is good to have differing opinions, but at the same time, it could be discouraging to someone who's never watched Star Trek and like, oh, well, a strange new world. This is kind of a new thing. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll go watch this. And they're like, oh, no, this fucking sucks because it portrays everything that this fucking TNG thing said and this original series thing said. And it's just like, eh, whatever. Anyway, we'll be at... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be at DemiCon this week. Where is it? Uh, it's at the Merle Hay uh, Holiday Inn. Um, it's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Here uh, they're not, Tickets available at By the way, they just want to be clear, they're not paying us to do this. We're, no. we're just doing this because uh, of your brother doing it. And yeah, it'll be fun for me because, again, I haven't been to a con in like four years. So 
I think 20. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 2019 was the last one I went to because I went to uh, the Kansas City Planet Comic Con. Ah. So that's the last time I went I to I think one. the last one, there was one after Wizard Con, that first one, about like three months later. And it was during the football season. I walked in. It was on a Sunday. It wasn't as big. But I walked in, and uh, there was a thing where you could sit and shoot Greedo, which was cool. Yeah. And I had my Vikings jersey on. And I walked in, and like you could hear, like, Jock! Jock! You know. Yeah. No! Yeah. And I was just like, guys, it's just it's a jersey. I love comic books. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm totally not a jock at all. How did I would have thought about this? Because you told me about it sooner. I should have thought about it doing a cosplay like a really cheap and lazy cosplay that's well uh the youtube channel i am doing a cosplay you know what i'm going as me me you're pointing at me i'm pointing at your shirt nobody cares it's an amazing t-bird shirt you son of a bitch tpublic.com slash the amazing bird not t-bird because i fucked up when i made the url okay so Uh, let's move on to the show no i don't want to move on yet i want to tell you how much i appreciate you and then we'll move on. <laughs> no, it should be fun. Um, no, we're going to do... Yeah, problem, we're going to do... Yeah. I like cons to an extent. Yeah. Uh, I love, like... Be, it is fun to go to these things and see all the different cosplays and things like that. But for me, the more joy I get out of it is doing, like, going to panels and stuff. Like, I, I understand going to see celebrities and getting things signed. Like, I have a couple, I've never I have really a couple been things into that. signed yeah, I in mean, my house. But. If I get to see them, like, off in the distance, it's like, cool, I was in the same room with I wanna, them. I'm not going to pay I the would money. like a signed copy of your brother's There's group. How well, do I work that out? We will probably get you one. Uh, there's, there's, <laughs> a, there's a dude that we used to know who is really into meeting people and getting autographs. Um, and uh, I just never understood that. Like... Yeah, it's that's proof that you met. You know, I just I don't know, whatever. Uh, no, but just, each, I mean, but it, is, each, it is cool to say hi to, to each, someone. And, to each their own. Yeah. I've got I w- some autographs. I will tell I just, you. I just I will tell you this right now. Spend my money on other things. I if guess. Sam Raimi is usually at, it's expensive. If Sam Raimi is at a con nearby, I would go to that and get. I would get my Spider Man Blu Ray signed. I have Bo Katan's fucking signature on a Battlestar Galactica. Katie DVD. Sackoff. Yeah. Yes. But that's what I mean. She's fucking tall, dude. <laughs> that's what I mean. I would yes. take those those Spider Man Blu rays I have, and uh-huh. yeah. Well, I, you know, if they charge per item, I would just have him sign one. But anyway, I would have him sign that because I first of all those those samey those Raimi Spider Man movies samey Rider Man came out when I was a kid. So they have very very yeah very sentimental value yeah. to me. But I mean, my brother was in uh, where they were filming uh, that first one, and uh, when they did the crowd scene, he's there somewhere. I don't know if he made it into the movie, but. He uh he answered one of those websites where you could be an extra. Brilliant. He got, right. he got to see Stanley from like ten feet away. Next segment. I got what I paid for. Um, well, it was free. Well, I said that. <laughs> so there, I don't know if you saw this. There was a rumor last week that was uh, thrown around by some clickbait websites. Reported a rumor that Mila Kunis, because she had she had had lunch with the director of the Fantastic Four, Who's and. That again? That '70s show, she's Jackie in that. No, she's, the director. I, I know who know. Mila. Cooper. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I sh- didn't have time to write down his name, and I don't care until I see the fucking movie. How's that, Tyler? First of all, can I just say it right now? The more time, because of all this casting rumors and shit, I I'm caring less and less about the Fantastic Four, Four movie right now. If there's Galactus in it, I'm back interested. Now I'm back invested. If there's Doctor Doom and Galactus in it, holy shit. I don't know if they'll really do that. I don't... Because they did that with Silver Surfer. Here's the thing. You can't can't really... You shouldn't do Doctor Doom again. From what I understand, Psycho Man is going to be the villain. Mm. Which makes perfect sense because he has uh, experience in the quantum realm, in the comics. So what I think is if you're going to try and make it that they've been disappeared forever... And that's why they haven't been around. Then Psycho Man is the guy to be, to take care of that. Now, um, if if you because again, they they've said Kevin has said explicitly explicitly like I know the guy. Kevin has said explicitly, I'm not. We're not doing another Fantastic Four origin movie. You well, will. Yeah, you you will not Doom see the third origin. time because we've well, already will seen not, Yeah, well, you will not see the origin. Uh, anyway, continuing on that, so she had lunch with the director, so that sparked rumors that people are like, "Oh, is she going to be Sue Storm? Is that what's going to happen?" Blah blah blah. And then 
some idiot scooper on Twitter uh, shared something that spread like wildfire that, no, it wasn't going to be Sue Storm. It was going to be The Thing. And what made me laugh about this is any normal person sees that headline and says, well, that's bullshit. That's stupid. But then you got grifters saying like, well, you know, it's believable with everything that the MCU has done. That's very believable. And then... There's other people that point something it out. It makes no sense for here's the character. The, here's the problem. What? Here's the problem. First of all, it makes no sense for the character. Second of all, no. they are not going to take one of their few Jewish characters yes. in all of their canon and make changes to him and his story because that one is it would piss a lot of people off, myself included. And it's not necessarily because it's a gender bending thing. It's again, you he is one of the few Jewish characters and his that and and what his struggle is just so integral to being who Ben Grimm is, and mm. and I and again I don't think they would do that. Like when they make those changes, it's not to the most important characters, no. despite his popularity and how good Into the Spider Verse is and how good Across the Spider Verse looks. Who is still the MCU main canon Spider Man? Peter fucking Parker, yeah. and that ain't changing. Because Peter Parker, it, like, it's the smaller characters they'll make changes to. There's characters that people don't care about, you know. They'll, then they'll make the changes, or they'll take a character that most people don't really care about, but they care about when you gender swap them, like Taskmaster. <laughs> like in the comics, he's yeah, he's got he is who he is. But like, is Taskmaster ever really been that integral to anything in the MC in, in, in Marvel ever? Here's here's why I didn't like have such a shit fit over Taskmaster being changed as much as he is I don't care as she it. is in the MCU um I <clears throat> in the comics I love Taskmaster I love the costume I love that she's that he's got a hood and a shield and a sword for some fucking reason. He looks like and a I, weird Grim Reaper, right? And I love that he like basically can kick every hero's ass because he's seen he he can repeat exactly what they do. He's, now let's take all that and and think about real real quick. Can we put that believably on an MCU screen and still maintain our our quality of films? Fuck to the no, man. I think that would be stupid in a movie. And, and so the change that they made in Black Widow is integral to the character being believable in the MCU and actually having a, a part in that story. Again, like you said, narratively it fits. Yes, if, if if we never see her again, big fucking deal. She is not he. The she whole, the character is not the integral. Whole, to a lot of shit, the like whole you were point saying. is her being tied to the black. Like it, it, it right. worked for the narrative, and it would make yes. sense that there's a different taskmaster. Because they could look, they could still make another fucking taskmaster well, and do it more comic aren't accurately. Are they going to bring her back anyway in the uh, Thunderbolts? Thunderbolts, because who knows? But I'm saying yeah. that could work. Yeah, I think so. But uh, I would love to see a redemptive arc for that character. But that's my point. They're not going to take a character like the thing no. and make those changes. Yes. And yes, you could say they tr they tr uh, swapped Johnny Storm. Fine. Yeah, we've seen that, but I just don't, that's yeah, but it was that, still the the character Johnny Storm. It's too and it, and it's too big of a change that they would never do it. Now would they make a black Ben Grimm? Maybe. Would they have him be black? I don't know. <laughs> I but what the grifters don't get, and they would just don't even if they do the because Mila they're Kunis getting paid thing, by dark money from libertarian. I want to be very clear. Yeah. It also you could still tell that story of yeah. Mila Kunis in, in, as the thing, and it, it would work. But the whole point is Ben's story is about him. Ben is he not feels a ugly fucking model looking guy. He's not. Mila Kunis is a model looking woman. She is a gorgeous, gorgeous. I can be on he's the cover of He's an average, ugly-looking dude that got turned he's into an ugly rock. He's a jock. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's a jock, right? Say what you will. I liked Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm. Right? I'll say it. I'll he, say it. He, he embodied the character pretty well. That's what I mean. I'm saying that, in, I mean, just to me, the character would not work as a really good-looking person because, A, that's kind of Johnny Storm's thing, you know? He's yeah. the good looking, he's supposed like, to be the hot, sexy he's the guy, hot which is which is why you get Chris Evans and Michael B. Jordan to be those guys, <laughs> and that is why the thing has to maintain kind of that ugly jock kind of hockey player almost um, that girls like, but he's not, you know, he's very, he's very, he's very insecure, and 
Again, it could but work. But he's the everyman like, that makes the Fantastic Four work. Because you got the brilliant Reed Richards. You got the super smoking Johnny and his super smoking hot sister, Sue. And then you got me, the thing. Whoops. I'm Ben Graham. Hey. hey. Of course you're going to feel ugly and stupid hey. around there. Jesse Ventura is the thing. Just, hey. make him, just make him CG and then he Listen, can voice him. Hey, hey I got Johnny. Some, I got a bunch of dogs. And they only answer Johnny. to me. Yeah, you know, I gotta say, we have Thank our, you, Will Sasso. We have our differences, uh, but I think deep down, I love it when you say flame on. That really gets. Hey, I think my Jesse Ventura is getting better here. Have you been smoking? I, I got a. Cigars? You, uh, well, I, I spend most of the time in Tijuana, and they got a lot of joints down there. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, again, I could be the thing pretty cool it's getting better I'm proud can, of it. can i just say that i want to go back to the well and say that yes a lot of people would have a problem with it but i think it would be a brilliant brilliant stroke of casting adam sandler <laughs> as the thing yes mm. boopity, i'm a rock no um. <laughs> did you see the movie where he was the coach uh, unco- oh no uh the other one is it hustle uh yes I yeah. haven't seen it, but yeah. I've heard that he embodies that kind of gruff, lovable, whatever. And if he's CGI or whatever, of course. And he could work as Ben Grimm because he's not like super good looking, but he's not ugly. Like girls would go for him. Only if, as he's walking by as a rock, some woman on the sidewalk goes, They're all going to laugh at you. That then would be I'll, funny as shit. That's a good idea. Right? Write it down, Hollywood. Well,. You know what? They might hire us because Hollywood's in some deep shit right now. Because, hey, you know uh, what? Scabs? Oh, no, we can't. Well, while I, I would love that segue, I did forget a th- couple things. Oh. So we talked about it last week. Still, We still don't know any more, but there's still rumors that Adam Driver's the guy to be Reed Richards, which is, if that is the case, I stand by what I said last sure. week. I think it's smart casting. Sure. I think it's good casting. Yeah. Now there's other rumors floating around. By the way, Mila Kunis addressed it on uh, James Corden's show. Saying that, like, all of a sudden, like, I'm the thing. She's like, I'm not in that movie. I just had lunch with him. She could be she, Alicia but, Masters. But she was saying that, like, now, but her response is being a little coy because she says, apparently, if you just have lunch with someone, you're in a movie, which I'm like, oh, fucking come on. People take meetings with producers and directors all the time in Hollywood. I think that's fine. But how she phrases it, she goes, I'm not in it, but I know who is. Which to me seems like a sleight of hand. I don't think that she's the thing. Per Ashton se. Kutcher, the flame, flaming torch, human torch. Flame. Hey, Ashton, I gotta ask you. You got? Are you kidding me? Do you really not shower? Because that's kind of, you know, I've been doing that since I've been a Navy Seal. Yeah. Well, so, why are you looking at me like that? What? You don't think I don't shave or don't shower? Wow. So can we... um, You got a problem with me, Buckle? He's never... I don't think he's ever said that in his life. So did you say Margot Margot Robbie? Yes, Margot Robbie is potentially rumored to be I think that would be good, too. I think that would be good, too. Here's the thing, though. Um, They were talking about, you know, doing some some swapping or whatever. Um, That kind of... Some spit swapping. Her and Reed. (laughs) No, race swapping. That's what happens. Oh, that's what happens when you kiss. That's true. With a lady or a man. Good lady or a man. Whoever um, you're with. <laughs> which, here's the thing, like, I, I'm not, how should I say this? I I am absolutely all about and totally fine with more inclusivity. Um, I hesitate when it's clearly signal, you know, uh, what is it, virtue signaling? Yeah. But I do... I do like, uh, I I am totally okay if they go that route. Um, If Adam Driver and Margot Robbie are cast as Reed and Sue Storm, respectively, then that negates that whole thing, and that's okay with me. Well, again, for me, it goes back to what I said earlier. But we have a lot of white superheroes in the MCU already. Tony Stark was still, you had Tony Stark, white. You had Steve Rogers, white. Hawkeye, white. Black Widow, white. Bruce Banner. Mark Ruffalo or Edward Norton, white. Yeah. I mean, and so, again, that's my point, is they haven't, they're not going to take their fucking, because <laughs> while I don't think 
and you know you probably have the same feeling I do. I don't know. Well, I don't think the Fantastic Four has a lot of like name. Like, I don't want to say name recognition. It doesn't have a big foot space in pop culture right now. Not as much. And no. they are not going in the but the way that Marvel feels about the Fantastic Four, because it's the first family of Marvel, they're going to treat it as such. So I do not be surprised if we have f- all four members be white. I would not be surprised at all. Because it took us how many years before we had a black Captain America? Before we finally saw that switch from Steve to whoever it was going to be. Whether it was going to be Bucky or Sam or whatever. Can I say, I'm saying they don't make those changes. Again, they don't make those changes until much later. Can you know I what say I mean? uh, a casting um, that I think would actually be brilliant for Sue Storm is Kiki Palmer. She was in... I would like to see... She, she wants to nope. be Rogue. She wants to do she X-Men, does. and she wants to be Rogue. Okay. And I was like, she would be great as Rogue. She I would love rogue, her as Rogue. She can be rogue. I was saying, I want her in the MCU. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's doing Password now. Do you know that? She's hosting that. She's also doing like a yeah. uh, thing with Meta. Like, are we there yet? <laughs> um. So let's. Are move we on. done and moving on? S- let's talk about some fun let's stuff. Let's talk about scabs, baby. Whoa. Let's talk about you and me. Do let's talk to... about not doing that because oh. we would be totally assholes. Wow. What? Uh, you know what's funny is we have rumors of... Uh, I keep going back to this. We, but we have rumors of Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards. We have uh, rumors of Sue Storm. Nothing on Human Torch. I haven't seen anything about Human Torch, any sort of rumors. We even got Mila, Mila, Mila Kunis as fucking the thing, but we haven't. Just put The Rock in there. <laughs> I he's, honestly, too ha- he's too handsome. Here's my thing about it, and we'll shut the door on this and move the on. The Rock, the thing. No, shut up. I'm just trying to stretch time. That's all I'm doing. Why? I don't know. Um, I'm going to stretch the that thing- time like I'll stretch that. <laughs> what? Okay. I'll eat your ass. Wow. What? Back to you, Chuck. <laughs> um, so I don't know why you're Chuck, but I I know that uh, when I hear the casting news, the official casting news, that I'm sure that a I'm going to be slightly surprised, but I'm probably also going to be pleasantly surprised. And I trust Kevin and all the powers that be over at M- over at the MCU. They have haven't let me down yet. Um, well, not totally. <laughs> um, but as far as casting goes, they've been really spot on with shit. Yeah. So, you know, I'm fine with whoever they cast. If it's an all white family, if it's all, you know, I, it, I'm just saying, don't be surprised if they just, no, but I'm saying like, I am not one of those people who fucking loses my shit. If a white fictional character is cast in a live action movie, uh, by, uh, is cast, or, or a black actor is cast in that movie to play a white fictional character. Like, I don't get all pissed off. 20, it makes no sense. The 2015 me. movie, I did not, do, I hated because it sucked. The what? The 2015 Fantastic. Is that the Miles Teller? Fant Four Stick, yes. I watched it, it's, but I don't think I made it all the way through. It's oh, it's such a forgettable the end of movie. It is my, so my point stupid, is, my point don't they is, fight him like in the microverse? It doesn't matter. Point is, fucking dumb. Michael B. Jordan being Human Torch was not the problem with that movie. No, it was not. That's my point. You know what was the problem? It was fucking Kate Mara's haircut. Well, it was apparently Fox meddling with Joshua Trank. He had a lot of. There's Did a, you? A guy, that movie guy got cut to shreds. Because that first, to be honest, the first half of that movie well, is reshoots, not terrible. Yeah. When I, no, when, no, when, no. The first right. half of that movie wasn't bad. It's the second half that well, was reshot and cut to shit. Well, the uh, uh, I had read that article um, where somebody was talking about how bad it was, and they were talking about the. At least that's what I. The did. hair. Kate Mara's hair. Because the continuity was, wasn't right. Because it, it was reshoots. Most of the movie had been shot with her as cert- having a certain haircut, and then they had to bring a wig in that wasn't right or something. But I don't know if you noticed it, but I remember distinctly when I was watching that that I I would catch it every time it was a <laughs> fuck up. I don't know because it would just be I like I don't remember. Hey, how's Kate Mara's hair look in this scene? It looks like shit. This is a reshoot. No, I I don't remember anything from that movie. But I remember. Yeah, it was. Let's move on. WGA, the Writers Guild of America, has issued another. Strike. So yes, they issued a strike at 12:01 a.m. Uh, specific Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday. That time was when the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers contracts expired. 
So interesting uh, thing too, and it, this has been fun to kind of look at the last few days because there are people like me, I think, and you that are going to be pro union in this stance and pro strike in this stance because right. these people are just trying to say, hey. What I've been thinking, too, is we are in a situation where we have talked about on this show before. We are going to get we are starting to hit critical mass in terms of just overall entertainment with these streamers. We have too much. And now there's because we have so much, we have too much. Now there's compensation issues. And they were talking about one of the writers, uh, the writer of the bear who uh, it won uh, awards. It won the uh, Golden Globe, I think. Sure. And he had to, he had a negative balance going to that thing and had to like loan his tux on credit to just go to the fucking awards thing. So that is just a great example uh, uh, of the the wage issue and and the compensation issue. Mm. Uh, So just a few statements from the WGA, quote, the survival of writing as a profession is is at stake in this negotiation. Driven in large part by the shift to streaming, writers are finding their work devalued in every part of the business. While company companies' profits have remained high and spending on content has grown, writers are falling behind. Uh, again, I think that's another great, 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 a great example of it. Like we we're saying, we are hitting a situation where it, like we've talked about, it, it is not sustainable. We are hitting a mass and. People only have so much time to watch so many things. Oh, yeah. So when when your Netflix or your uh, well going to be Max in a few weeks, when your uh, Warner Brothers or whether you're Peacock, Paramount, whatever it is. Oh, and way to just jump into the fucking fray willy nilly without thinking about it. MGM Plus, you fucking shitheads. <laughs> What the fuck? Why, we don't need another separate no. fucking and plus, this man. Is, this is the thing. If you were to buy all these things and add them up, that's way more than what you'd be paying for cable. And the whole point and of getting away from them. this that's fine with w- them. was not dealing with the FCC, seeing content that is more mature, that has swearing and violence and sex and all this other stuff. And it's also this thing of, yeah, not kowtowing to a traditional format. You can make episodes that are an hour long or episodes that are 35 minutes. But see, we we have created a really stupid fucking capitalistic As uh, it always uh, is. Capitalism is always the problem. (laughs) Which is that everything, you're in radio and so am I. What pays our salaries, Jake? Sex. Little ads. Advertising. <laughs> That's what fucking pays us. That's what allows us to be on the air yeah. at all. If we don't have, ad- have advertising, we don't go on the air. And that is fucking stupid. Yeah. As somebody who relies, who's in a business that relies on advertising, I fucking hate it. <laughs> I can't stand Did I tell you the other day on our station we had a fucking an ad for Des Moines Public Schools? They just got their entire funding slashed and cut and fucking moved to vouchers and shit. And they're using what little money they got left to put a fucking ad on the radio. No. Nobody's moving to Des Moines because they drove through and heard that fucking ad. I got to get my kids in this public school. You fucking idiots. Well, that then you just kind of devalue your profession there. What? You just devalued your profession. Mine? Because, yeah, because you're saying, what's the point of making an ad? Nobody's going to. No, I'm talking about, that's an entirely separate event. Anyway. But I do not like that I have to rely on yeah. advertising in my profession. And if I was a... A touring musician, I would have to have somebody sponsor it so that I could go out and do it. But I'm also talking, I'm also coming at it from an angle from my personal experience of having a family. Mm. You only have so much time you can dedicate. First of all, as a parent, you only get so much time yourself of, yeah, right? of screen time. <laughs> but on top of that, it's it is you only have so much time at night to watch a show with your with your spouse or by yourself or whatever. Before you, you know, you have to get up and go to work and take the kids to school or daycare, whatever the case may be. So you don't have time to watch all of these shows. And by the time you might get invested in the show, it's canceled. And then that that writer is out of work because it didn't meet the numbers they wanted to stream because which they're not and everyone is going to. It's the same. It's, it's 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 an example of why capitalism doesn't work. It's and, the same example and, of MCU. Let me let me let me do you a fucking favor. Okay. If you're listening to this right now, and if you're mad at me attacking capitalism, turn it off. Because I'm sorry, I'm not going to defend a system yeah. that is broken and it cost. And by the way, the average person that would listen to this, that works an average forty an hour week like myself and and you, mm. um, the the system is designed to keep you poor. The system is designed to put its boot on your throat, and. We are seeing what is happening. These companies, mm-hmm. again, how does it make sense 
that all of these executives have made it, had to lay off thousands, thousands of employees, but still make profit and still put more money and put millions of dollars of raises in their pocket. When a system creates that, it is broken. Mm-hmm. When and this is why the strike is important because workers should always always be the control of means and production. If you want to call me a fucking commie socialist, I don't give a shit. Well, no, your, dude. No, your label doesn't matter to me right. because socialism is a word and communism is a word that people hate, but they fucking love benefited from it. So mm. shut up. Because I guarantee you, you benefit from some sort of socialism yes, or some sort of government do. system. If you live in America. Especially you rich motherfuckers. Oh and boy. I know you do. Oh, boy. Ask Elon Musk where he gets all his fucking money. See, trust me, socialism is built for the rich and that's why they tell us it's bad yes because they don't want us to because they, reap the benefits of it which it's designed to help us and then they get pissy when uh, i don't think there should be any billionaires he's right there should not be billionaires in this country if you truly want to be free we'll have no billionaires because everybody and and this strike is all they're trying to look, all they're br- trying to say with this look, strike, let me just break it down let me just break it down even even like you know uh, I've I've thought of a way to break this down in so many fucking ways, or, or for so many so long, and I have I have never really ra- risen above the level, and I've never wanted to of like middle management. Why? Because I have no desire to be a part of that system. I just don't. I don't care about the extra pay. I don't care about the benefits, extra vacation. Fucking, I don't give a shit. Why? I want to be on the ground. I want to be the low totem on the pole. Whatever. But let me just say this. Everywhere that I've worked, be it in an office, uh, in a retail environment, in a in a restaurant, whatever, uh, as a taxi driver, uh, in radio, in TV. Let me just say, the people that make the decisions never fucking ask the people with no. boots on the ground if it's a good idea before they make changes. And then everything gets fucked up and who gets blamed? The people with boots on the ground because they're not fucking implementing it properly. And it's fucking stupid. It's it's just it drives me nuts. And if you want to call it communism or whatever, it's stupid. We should be telling you how to change things because we're the ones who experience it and are frustrated by it every fucking yeah. day. Well, the, wor- it's, it's, the workers. It's, it's insane, and they haven't. Nobody ever says no CEO or no billionaire ever gets exploited. Yeah, it's always the. Pe- I got a the, survey the, at my full time job Bezos, today. I'm like, what the fuck is the point of this? You're not going to listen to me, Sorry. Jeff Bezos. Pissy. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is never going to have any sort of. Situ- like you know, it's like we talked about it with, mm. J- with what Jesse Ventura said. No human being on this planet Earth works enough to make a billion dollars, no. and they shouldn't. And he's never going to have and a you reason shouldn't. to need that much. But you talk about yeah, you t- you think Jeff Bezos or you think Elon Musk or fucking Mark Zuckerberg is going to listen to anything that those people that are doing the work that are working in the factories or the engineers or whoever they may be, they're not going to listen to them. No. And the, and and this is a great example of saying, well, like, what about okay. This is just saying we want more compensation. We want a better situation. That's all it is. And people that are pushing back against this, who are, but they're coming from it from their stupid God. Everything's got to be woke angle. <laughs> their angle is that if they made better content, they'd get paid more. Or if they made better content, things wouldn't get canceled. And again, I'm sorry. There's 24 hours in a day, <laughs> every fucking day. And you, as a human being, if you Truly get your eight hours of sleep. Have what? How many hours left in your day? You got what? Uh, do the math for me. 16 hours for the rest of your so, day. Now, now take another eight hours out of that for your job and then take however many hours you have. Spe- if you have a family, however you do that. Or, you know, if that's not the case. Even then, out of your 24 hours, you have spent 16 of them. One, eight sleeping, eight working. So now you only have that finite amount of time to watch what you want to watch. So Elon's you know I mean? got this thing on Twitter today it's, where he's me, talking about uh, how angry he is that uh, you know there's not enough there's not enough breeding going on and and let me just tell you something Elon you fucking schmuck all you want is a fucking cheap labor force you piece of fucking garbage okay here's what's going on we have too many people in the world. Do you know how many people are begging to be on TV and write for TV and direct for TV and produce for TV and be in TV and be in radio blah, 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 uh. and on and fucking on? I'm just saying there's a reason <laughs> why we have so many options because there's so many people with stories to tell. I don't have a problem with that, but at some point, 
not everybody's story is going to be heard. Well, I, I to there's me, too many stories. It's to, not the in, in, to pick in, in, from. In my opinion, I, I get what you're saying, and you're right. It's great, and that's and that's what I also think is what's great about it. We have all these streaming services. You don't have to pay for every one of them, but there are opportunities to see a lot of great shows and great things, and take chances on shows that you probably wouldn't sure, have seen. Right? Sure. And I agree with you. But again, you know, it, it, it is that balance of time and, and what you want to seek out. It's not sustainable. Out. But at yeah. the same time, you don't need to fucking balloon these shows up to Hollywood movie level budgets. When you hear about fucking Rings of Power for Amazon, how it was, how it's the most expensive show ever made. It was like five hundred million dollars no, or some shit it. like that. No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> and then they don't. And then they pay their writers peanuts because they can, because they they have to, you know, renegotiate contracts and consider like. Streaming is something that has has changed entertainment, and mm. it's a situation of you have to figure out how that compensation is going to work. Uh, and what, another quote the, uh, from the WGA, quote, the companies have used the transition to streaming to cut writer pay and separate writing from production, worsening working conditions for the series writers at all levels, end quote. How many times have we heard from these different companies where showrunners leave after a season or certain writers leave? It happens. It used to happen all the time. Yeah. Or it happened before, but now you also it see it happen here. Well, shit. Uh, House of House of the Dragon, the first season does great for HBO. Does great, gets a, gets a second season, and after they announce a second season, the showrunner leaves. And I'm sure it was some sort of compensation issue. It has to be. Mm. Uh, one of the great things that come out of this, CNN did an interview with uh, Adam. Uh, Condova, I believe is his name. Adam ruins everything. He used yeah, to have yeah, that yeah, true yeah, TV yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also has a show called The G Word yeah. on uh, Netflix. He is taking part in the strike, and he was asked about it, and he said, you know, David Zasloff, who owns this company, who owns CNN, <laughs> while he's on CNN, he says this. He says he made $250 million last year. That's ten, that, that is worth... 10,000 of us writers collectively is how much that would be. It doesn't make sense. Mm -mm. It's bullshit. Mm -mm. It's pretty much what he was saying. And it's true. You got a guy like Zaslov who, you know, the acts of Zaslov, as some losers would say on the internet, decides to slash <laughs> and cut and hack and uh, cut and all in this. In a positive way? Gets rid of all this stuff on HP. Cut, to, you know, takes these things off the, the streaming platform. See all these things out. Sure. Batman Cape Crusader, they're probably going to make a good amount of money on Amazon from, yeah. from licensing that. I'm sure they make money because I've seen Warner Brothers stuff on other platforms. I understand that. But like to see how he is just thrown away. Did we tell people what we found on the internet, by the way, or on Peacock? Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there some point someday. The point is, what I'm trying to drive at is like he has made decisions that, again, could be good, to, could maybe consider good business decisions in the long run. Sure. But this is what happens when you let capitalism and corporatism infect your art and one of the few times i ever agree with nerd Roddick is when he says this is a problem of turning art into content i agree with that i think there's some sort of agreement yeah, there absolutely. yeah of course and that's just the world we live in and i think this is because and and now whether these companies like and to what are we turning we're, we're turning content into art yeah well, i guess but what we're seeing, what we're seeing, think about all the podcasts out there. We also got podcasts to listen to. We're finally seeing uh, again a pushback because the last time we had it was in 2007. And let me tell you, the Geico cavemen got their own TV show in that writer strike situation. So I'm just saying, heroes. Everybody keeps talking about how heroes turned out because of the writer strike. I'm just saying, you better fix this Dude, situation. Heroes was so good, and then the fucking writer strike in season two was like. <laughs> course Why? yeah yeah I, I i just i'm always going to be on the side of the worker i will always be pro-union and yeah. um people will be like well that's because you don't have a business you don't run a business no 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 i care about people and like it or not if you're running if you're <laughs> if you're running a quote-unquote successful business but you still can't pay your people a living wage it's not successful if you if you, if you so can't fuck off. if you can't run a business without exploiting your workers then you're shouldn't be you, in business. you shouldn't be in business. you shouldn't be in business well you would say that's the american way and i'm like yeah but that's why we're trying to stop that because well that makes you a fucking commie and get out of my well, country I, well and i hate and i hate <laughs> and i hate this idea that you're we, not a patriot 
on top of the pay situation, most most job situations, it's like you get punished for ha- daring to have a family. Oh you, my you get God, punished yes. for daring to spend time outside of the How come you're taking your time off, man? What am I supposed to do oh, with your job? Oh, you got to take time off because your kid's sick. Fuck you. Dude, a couple weeks ago, okay, a couple weeks ago, I called in sick, and they were like, yeah, uh, so you're going to make up those hours later this week, which I've never had happen at a retail place. And I was like, uh, I guess Friday, which I really couldn't, but I did. And this week on Monday, I was sick as a dog. Like, I had some serious sinus issues, but I went into work anyway. Why? Because I have Saturday off this week so we can do the Demicon. And I know if I would have called in on Monday, they would have been like, what day can you work this week? Yeah. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? In 2023, (laughs) I have to fucking justify not coming into work and infecting others? Yeah. Whatever, dude. Whatever, man. Way to go, capitalism. All about coulda, not shoulda. Wow. Tyler, uh, before we get to our other segments, no! wow, you want to <laughs> talk about the Dune Two trailer? <sighs> What'd you think, buddy? <laughs> Tell me about it. Because <laughs> I watched it too. I thought it was. I thought it was like. Ooh. Did you not hear me on the full, on the couch? Ah! There? Yeah, he was. Just, he just kept screaming at his phone, dude. <laughs> uh, dude, the the build up to him riding the worm was pretty sick. That was awesome. I know that like there's going to the, be people on the, the internet shooting like, of the, way to go show it, man. But this is what I loved about the first <laughs> one and what Villeneuve did with the first one and what he's doing here. Um, is he's really like getting in the nitty gritty of the tech of the world, which is very important, yes. as you've told me. Yes. Because of the idea of like, we have human computers because technology and all that shit. But to see like how the technology of the harpoons work to fucking hook the sandworms was so awesome. I was yeah. Like, oh. And it's like it's like a slight thing. In the trailer, but to see how it works and how it's they even, do that, it's even cooler and then like see that. Javier it's Bardem even, being like, he did it. It's even cooler like that than that. The sandworms are scaled, okay? They have yeah. scales, and underneath the scales is a pink, fleshy substance, okay? It's like a video game. Like okay. you gotta get the little thing, you know. Well, you get the hook under a scale, and it hooks it up, and so then the yeah. sand gets so the so you you hook it. Then as the worm turns to get that fleshy part away from the grating sand, your hook's in it, and it pulls you up to the top, and then you hook it again, and it stays like that. It keeps the fleshy stuff where you got your hooks to ride it up top, Yeah, and you ride it. It's like it rains. like rain, so you're riding a horse, but it's a worm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Fade Routho looks fucking cool as fuck. Um, (laughs) I mean, just the whole, the whole, fuck. Look. A week ago, I, I poo-pooed it, but honestly- well, Yeah, because that, that wasn't a real that trailer. First, it wasn't? No, I didn't fucking think so. Well, I didn't watch as far as you did. I think I was like, I got the gist. This, like, But you know what I thought? I was, so I was like, wait a minute, haven't I seen this footage? I was footage? so mad, dude. I was like, this is fucking like cut up from the first movie. You sons of bit, you know. Yeah. Anyway, the the one that came out today, holy shit balls. I metaphysically left am, my- am, am turgid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, gosh. What? I left my body. It well, was do like you want a, me to say it like in basic terms. Yeah, like a normal I person. Got a bone. <laughs> Me, I got a bone. I got a metaphysical boner. You just say that, man. Okay. Don't be above talking about your dick. Okay. I never <laughs> am. You never have been before. Never have been before. Never talk about my dick in public. <laughs> I hope not. That'd be very unpleasant. It depends. Hey, man, how's that taco? Have you seen my dick? <laughs> It just always just out hey, do of nowhere. You think you can, do you think you can help me uh, find this? Uh, sure. After I, sh- oh, that's weird. I after you say, what? After I show you my, you know, but that's weird. Well, I would say it was fine, but what you said was that's weird. That's why I stopped. Yeah. How is that? Even- <laughs> I don't know that logic. Have I told you about my dick? Have I told you about it? I'll eat your ass. That's what the guy says when you tell him about his penis. That's nice. And then you say, one million dollars, bitch. Which I feel like is a big price, but <laughs> <laughs> where are we going again? Uh, Dune was what we were talking about. Yeah, but I we were okay, we should try and tra- uh, try and see that one in the uh, theater. We are the going theater. to see. <clears throat> we are going to see. I'm going to see Guardians. No, I, I got my ticket on Saturday. I ripped it night. up and threw it out. <clears throat> That's weird because it's on the That's, internet. Yeah, it's a digital you one. Dick, I you dick. I messed up the QR code, so I can't scan it. That's what I did. I'm going to try and see with my wife on Saturday. We'll see how that goes. That's the beauty of uh, grandparents. They always uh, they always uh, like to babysit. I'm just saying. I'm uh, going to come. Uh, yeah. 
I will. Uh, <laughs> I like how I like how you're like I'll uh, fucking go by myself. I guess. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> no, mind. you knew you were going. Like I'm out of town. I so thought I, we had talked about it that she wanted. Uh, so uh, we we're not, we don't need to discuss it on right. the air, but. But uh, I thought we had talked about it where, uh, for various reasons, uh, we weren't going to see this one together. Yeah. Um, which was fine. So I, I knew that, and I made, I got, I have the whole weekend off, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're going to yeah. see it. So the review is going to be later than it has been, just because, again, our re- our uh, record schedule has changed to be more during the right. week. So. And anybody tuning in to be like, I got to get the hot scoop on the newest not, movie. Yeah, I don't you're think they're coming to us. Wrong All place. ten of our listeners. Oh, we love you. Do, do, do. So, do, Tyler, do. I want to, before we get to the end of this, can I pitch you something? Because mm-hmm. you talked about it earlier. On Peacock, we have found. I found, <laughs> I don't know how oh, yes, this yes, stumbled yes, into yes, my yes, algorithm, yes, yes, but yes. I found RoboCop. I didn't even know this existed. The, it's a live action RoboCop TV series. And let me tell you, I haven't watched any no, of it's it. It's the series you said, or is it it's Prime Directives? It's just RoboCop, the series, not Prime Directives. It's just called the series. So okay. it could be Prime Directives rolled into this. I don't know. There's like it's, it has one season. It's now, like 22 episodes. There's two different live. I know. Act- okay, I know what you're talking about. Okay, I, 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 so we think it's the one that was created that's more family friendly. Because <laughs> Prime Directives is not. I'm t- I really think, but the series, uh, the series, his wife and kid come back into the picture, dude. Oh God. Yes. I want to do a series. You didn't read the synopsis? No. On why Wiki? would I? Oh! Why would I spoil it for myself? I w- I didn't. I want to. Ex- I want to experience. I wanted this to live. see what the big deal was like what the what the thing was. i don't think, i don't want to experience I wanna, it I, uh, I would, it's gonna be bad i want to do a review of it like i oh it's 22 episodes that's the problem and i think they're all like fucking 45 minutes and i'm like why do i have to sit through this so i feel like if we like did it in chunks <sighs> like we did like the first 11 and the last 11 and like spaced it out because i don't know if i could fucking sit down and watch all that at once. you know i don't want to watch lost again yeah Fine. Well, do me a favor. We'll watch the first. Well, you'll sit down. We'll say we'll watch the first three episodes. After those first three episodes, we do a review and then we say, "Hey, whether or not we go for the next nineteen every every week after that, it's time." The next, I think like this should be gonna, the week that we drop. So out. should I? Should I make a RoboCop the series <laughs> sounder so we can have like a segment for twenty two weeks? <laughs> twenty. I'm sorry. Twenty weeks. Well, I feel like if. Uh, it's also on Tubi, I guess. Oh no, I'm sorry, RoboCop is what I typed in, not RoboCop the series. I just want to <laughs> see to make sure and see how many fucking. Ro- I, pu- I put it. I, I put it. I put in uh, RoboCap. Robo RoboCapy. And it took me to sharper image. 1994 is when this came out, so this is post RoboCop three even. Right. So <laughs> it's I, I, like I said, like Ooh. um. What's Shit, 22 episodes is 21 plus the pilot. Shitty. Uh, run time, run time. Is it, is it 30? Please, God, let it be. No, 44 no. minutes? You know it's going to be. <laughs> is that just the first one, though? This is 22 hours of my life. I don't know if I can give this shit. Dude, I don't have a a, a again, family to deal or to like, you know. Again, that's why I'm saying it. I don't want to waste 22 hours. That's what I'm saying we do like a Let's do the The f- first episode is 90 minutes cuz it's two episodes in one. It's a two-parter. Okay, you know what? No, okay, we're starting with the first and that's it. Cuz it's oh. 90 fucking minutes, oh, dude. Wait, but hold on. What? Hold on. What? What, are there two? Are you telling me there's two stories per episode? Because it says episode three is prime suspect, first suspect. Is that like? <laughs> God damn are we gonna it. get God like damn it. two twenty minute stories rolled into one? God damn it! When a televangelist, I don't want to do li- this hey, anymore. Hey, listen what? to the description okay. of episode three though. Okay. When televangelist Reverend Bob Taker is killed and the murder weapon is RoboCop's gun, he is arrested and placed on trial. <laughs> He has an alibi which he refuses to divulge. So, <laughs> so he's about to be deactivated. Third episode, we're going for it, man. Oh, fine. Uh, th- but the thing is, the fucking writers for the pilot were the guys that wrote the movie. So maybe the pilot's. Good, I know, but and then the rest of it's bad. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, Madigan. What the fuck is the name Madigan? So RoboCop and Madigan undercover a conspiracy by an insane genius and an OCP executive develop a computer linked to a human brain designed to run the entire city. <laughs> That's the first two episodes. 
Where does it go from here? I kind of want to watch Where it. Where does it go from here now uh, that all okay. of our kids are growing up? Is Paul Shapiro related to Ben Shapiro? Maybe that's the problem. I don't think so. So this is a this what's funny too is this one we got picked up mid season because the pr- original air date is March fourteenth. So you oh know yeah. that's oh that's yeah. a replacement show because they're like shit. What do we got? That's it. Oh, Christ. Okay. And they're like, you know what's really gonna work for us being in the hot Fuck. dead summer? Like <laughs> half the season is in June, in July, September. How long does this thing go? Uh, but ah, man, how did it last? It was a Fox show, I just, wasn't I it? I just, I re- it was on Fox, wasn't well, it? Well, yeah. So you know, there was like you got to assume it had to have been Fox. What to Ro- last that episode long. fourteen? RoboCop versus Commander Cash. Children are rioting and stealing all over the city as RoboCop faces his most most formidable opponent, a nutcase, but who believes he's a real live version of OP- OCP's superhero, Commander Cash. Dude, I kind of want to watch this show. You know, okay. Can we make it a let's yes. you're right. We'll we, watch we'll watch we, we'll watch the first two episodes. Okay. Because it's for a sure. two parter, right? Yeah, and I think okay. it's like ninety minutes or some shit. Right. So so we'll watch that and then we'll decide. And I think what we should do is cause I got a real strong feeling that none of these fucking episodes are connected in any way. <laughs> that we just do like a roulette. Oh. And we just do like a random number generator and then wherever we land, we land on. So we would go from like Right. We would do we would do one to nineteen. So number one would actually be like number three, episode number three or whatever. You know what I mean? Yes. We should do something like that because I want to do, dude. If I, I is if it I, there? If I can make more RoboCop content, I will do it. Yes. And hopefully at some point we can do videos so I can wear my RoboCop shirt. This is your move, creep. There's a, there's a guy there's a villain in this in this series Pud called Face. Yes. But there's another one called Doctor Cray. Z dude, Maillardo. dude, Roddy Piper fucking shows up on this show. What as Tex Jones? <laughs> what the fuck? He's a formerly clean living mountain auto visual <laughs> research scientist with a flair for art. We've got to watch this show. At the very least, we got to watch the Roddy Piper episode. Jones is also the original creator of Commander oh, Cash. He's so on rolls into episode it. Episode fourteen. We got to watch it. Got to watch it's it. It's a given. Holy shit, dude! Who is? I can't. Don't read anymore because it'll. It's gonna ruin the plot of the Richard show. Richard Eden is that the guy who was the RoboCop in the third one? No, that's uh, Robert Burke. Oh yeah, okay. Robert Burke's been in a lot of shit. You'd recognize him. <sighs> he was in Thinner. Yeah, I know what you're talking. I know who you're talking. About. That was his first role was RoboCop, his first major movie role. Oh, it's like way to go, dude! Way, way to turn that into something good because that was not a good movie. Oh, they got beloved Canadian actor Richard Eden Eden to be fucking RoboCop. This guy doesn't have the chin for a RoboCop helmet. <laughs> well, it's built. They built the helmet for him. No shit. <laughs> the look on your face. Because I just, I think you were so so shocked at how deadpan that was. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I just like rolling my eyes. I just like. I, fu- I find myself rolling my eyes better when I'm with you. So again, we're in agreement. Do we do it next week? When are we doing RoboCop? Because we got to do Guardians next week. At some point, we'll we'll, we'll talk. We should talk yeah, about this. Let's 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 put this. I want to watch it right now. I'm fucking fired on, up. On 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 air, we're gonna do this. We'll talk about it later. We'll have After a w- if if we get if either one of us if we both get a chance to watch it before next week we'll do it okay. if not we're gonna give ourselves two weeks. Well, wa- yeah, we'll we'll get it when we get it. Yeah, but I don't know if I can. We have it. to watch it before <sighs> two weeks from now, but not next week because that's a little. We're mostly gonna be talking about Guardians. Most just likely. saying, just give ourselves a little less pressure. I'll probably try. You know, I'm watching it tonight. When I get know, home. right? <laughs> I'm gonna take notes. I want to write down some notes because God. But this is the thing. We're not even gonna wait till next week. This is the thing. As a RoboCop, this like, Saturday we'll be like, dude, RoboCop. The series as like is the, awesome. One of the biggest RoboCop pe- fans I know myself. Uh, That's how we became friends. Yeah. We started talking about because, RoboCop. Yeah, man. And then, you know what's funny is it's what really makes me laugh is like Verhoeven projects don't work without him. Those Starship Troopers <laughs> really movies, don't. those sequels, just do not work without him. They well, just cause, don't. Because well, they miss the point of the original. And the, but that's the thing, Ed Newmeyer. The guy that wrote RoboCop wrote Starship Troopers. He wrote some of those sequels. I'm like, how did it get lost in tra- <laughs> Because you didn't have Verhoeven's out to scream. Right. I mean, you have to have the a fucking whole team. bugs. You have you to have a whole team. Watch those fucking bugs. No, that's he's like, they're coming to bite you. Have you seen how he directs? Like, no wonder him and Arnold get along so well. The way they fucking talk. Show me your lead. Have you seen? 
I started watching Barry too, but uh, let's let's move on to uh, the the segment that is sponsored. I don't want to say it because it spoils it. So yeah, spoils. The, so we'll pause it. No, well, you know, I because well, you got to read it. Oh, okay, put me on blast. Well, I'm saying we got to pause. Should I play it and then read it? It's up to you. Because I like you screaming at me to read it. You know, man, <laughs> fucking read it. Get the swearing out now. At least you remembered almost to bring it to work today. Brilliant. <laughs> That's that. Was, I thought that was it, and when I heard brilliant, <laughs> that fucked me up, man. I was like, whoa. I I personally I like the Guinness one more. Maybe I should have mm-hmm. got that one. Mm-hmm. But you know what I thought? Because I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it on my lunch break. Yeah. No. And it then I had made and then sense. I was you, in my I've car done that. about halfway to work. I've done that. And I was just like, brilliant. Because I had forgotten the book. You get what you pay for. And then yeah. I got what I paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have Paul Giamatti like his worst because role? Because Paul Giamatti is a fucking treasure. God He's damn. a fucking goddamn. When you get Paul Giamatti. I got what I paid for. Yeah. You, fucking you got a right. powerhouse performance is what you got. He's goddamn. Brilliant. Oscar bait. Oscar bait. I tell you what, if I ever met him. I'll eat your ass. <laughs> wow. And then, <laughs> and then he'd be like. Yes. Uh, let's get to booking. Let's, do it. let's get to booking. Let's, let's get, get to, to booking. <laughs> <laughs> booking. All right. Yeah. Special shout out to your mother. No, I'm just uh, special shout. I don't know. Shout out to Mayhem Comics for uh, hooking us up again as they do every week for the Mayhem Comic of the Week. Tyler, right, right off the bat, what? I don't think there's anything wrong with what I said. What are we talking about this week? Um, we're talking about Silence Track Silence one by Devin Craft. You're still talking. Silence. Da, da, da. Now, Silence. Uh, Devin Craft's Silence, track number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a Kickstarter book, mm-hmm. so that's really I don't cool. Know if you notice, but the printing is really interesting on this. Like you can feel the the words, the letters. Really? Yeah, it's really interesting printing. Well, it's like a little bit of a raised font. Yeah, like all the some of the uh, lines well, themselves. The, uh, that, that's something. Uh, it's interesting <laughs> artwork. I hate the artwork. No, uh, honest opinion of it. Um, I think it's a really interesting story. I I talk a lot about the art on these, but I want to talk about the story in in the sense of uh, it it is sad. It's a story about loss. It's a very sad story about grief and loss. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it's such a weird flip of the switch because it starts off as like this big thing they're on this sh- this sub submarine and right. they're about to face this big storm and they're like let's just fucking rock and they're with Jackie from Jackie and the Rippers which is a great name for a band Jackie and, and then the it just goes into backstory and then it gets in right into exposition so yeah that that is an issue for me is like instead of I I don't have an issue with telling the this is, and we don't know if that'll be the end of the story, but right. telling where this story ends up at the beginning, very common story mechanics, very common uh, common thing, right. but it does kind of like weirdly screech it down to a halt, and then it gets really sad. Yeah, like the tone shifts. I don't want to say quickly, but it does shift, and it slowly leads to that because then we find out oh her mom's dead. Oh, we also find out. That clearly, and it's funny because to me, I think it's going to be a story based on what I've seen in this. Is it's going to be a story about loss, like you talked about, and it's going to be a story about how her father never really dealt with the loss of her mother, and she does something brash and. But it's clearly uh, does like something wrapped up in music too. But, I mean, but she don't... does. But she does something brash, and she does something that that. Uh, What's the word I'm thinking for? Uh, it, on impulse. Impulsive. Because she didn't. Uh, <laughs> because she didn't properly deal didn't with his, the his potential death or his pot- uh, potential grief well, of him dying. You're, if you're going to call your first issue track one, and there's a guitar on the cover, music is a pretty big part of this book. 
It's clear. Yeah. Um, Because the note is what gives her the flashback. They start playing, and then mm -hmm. she said that she subconsciously started playing the song that her dad played. Yeah. But... The art is interesting. It's it's not um it, it's a lot we we've done uh a few fantasy books uh during in this segment uh so far. And some of those have had kind of a cartoony um drawings or art art style. Yeah. This one is is sort of cartoony, but it's more um realistic, I guess. But it's very derivative. Yeah. Um, it looks like an, an animated show. It, it looks does. like it, something it, you'd watch on Adult Swim. It does. Something. It does a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's <clears throat> it's it's it's. I don't know if I love it. I I do like it. It's pleasing. It, it's not. It works for the story. But I think just to me, like, you know, I see the cover and everything, and I'm like, well, this is just made for me. And then I read through it, and uh, I thought that was a comment. Yeah, I thought they were in space at first, which yeah. was kind of an interesting yeah. like flip of perspective on it. Yeah, and, which again uh, it, it adds yeah. to you know the ocean feeling like space right. where there there's so much of it. So it's art, it's Wide art, open it's space. music, it's it's art, it's music, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's sirens, it's fantasy. It's there's a lot going on in this book, and uh, I recommend it. Um, that I thought that was going to be a lot more negative than how it turned out. I don't know how. I don't know how. It's a mismatch of um, how genres dense for sure. the story is going. Yeah. Well, not and, quite and we, sure where you're going. The tease is like that. It's gonna that it was a siren at the end of the book, and it's like, okay, are we going in the supernatural thing? Which I think again, well, clearly, the like sirens, the engine of the yeah. submarine is like there, there's clearly uh, fantasy elements. I mean, the map in the beginning of the book is like I don't know where that is. Yeah. Well, the, and the map in the beginning is uh, what is it? Uh, Port Town Anthem, Hades Hexagon, and Cauldron. I don't know where those that, are. That's all made up, all fictional places. But it sounds like it, it. I mean, it sounds like a kind of a dystopian fantasy future a little bit. Well, yeah, because the town is run near, near run by one woman in a monopoly because it was a, a like a tourist attraction, music town, and then it kind of died out, and then it got a resurgence. And there's some stuff going on there. I mean, geez, I do think there are some things where I'm like, wow, that was kind of a. But again, I think that adds to this character. I don't. Do they ever even say her name? I don't, I don't know. Do they even say the character's name. I don't know. But uh, it adds to her like brash decision making and her her not you know just li giving into her impulses. Johanna. Because her first decision is to slap Penny Love, who is the lady that's running the business that sent her a letter saying, "Hey, your dad's ship was lost at sea. He's dead." Mm -hmm. Pretty much, she doesn't, she doesn't say she, he's dead, but usually in that case, that's what it means. Generally, they see. believe that the Hades hexagon is like the, uh, the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. triangle yeah. which, Nobody yeah. ever talks about that anymore. You know? That's the Bermuda Triangle. Maybe because nobody can talk about it, man. Nobody even thinks about that. Think about it. Um, think about it. It's a good book. I, I would recommend it as yeah. well. I I think that I. Uh, like you, I would have preferred more time with Jackie and uh, the Rippers and that whole setup. I think, I, but I imagine there'll be payoff later in the story. Mm. Um, but I, I think it is effective at making it, it did a great job of being effective in making me sad, in a sense of like, well, she leaves and then her dad dies, and there there is a lot of relatability to that in a sense of she was getting away from her dad because. Again, back to what I was saying, the, the cycle of the grief of like uh, him singing to her every night, I think, was something that was like a sweet sentiment. But after a while, she just was like, I don't want to be here anymore because you clearly never got over or you never truly dealt with mom right. and what happened with mom. And it's I, but I, you're, I, he's, I think, he's he's so he's he's almost OCD the way she describes him. Right. Like he's he's got to have the same salmon and eggs every day. And then he goes to work, and then that's it. I am um I am I'm a big fan of just what it took to put this out, uh, for this one person to write and draw this whole thing, um, and tell probably a very personal story. But it seems like it, yeah. And and they've obviously taken a very personal story and added elements of like fantasy and. And you know, uh, near future, and and to kind of tell their personal story, which is the way all great art is. All, all great art is is personal, and you add stuff to you know. Well, and I think it kind of resonated embellish. with me a little bit because I I understand where her character is coming from, 
Because she refuses to believe that he's dead. She thinks he's just lost and she can find him. But I can relate to a certain extent because I think deep down she knows he's dead. Or deep down she it knows... It might turn out that he is. Or maybe he's not. But but I think deep down, yeah, she has that feeling of he's gone. And as someone who has experienced that where their parent passed and they weren't there, I understand that level of like the unfairness of it and like her like, this can't be real, this can't be possible, this is not fair, you know. So again, that, that struck a chord with me on a different level and I thought that that was an interesting approach. But again, it just seemed... Well, I, I mean, don't think we spent enough time with the the father, in my opinion. But then again, I well, th- he's still the MacGuffin. He's I still what's driving. I, he's the catalyst for all of it. You and I so. get along. You and I kind of bonded over our, our, our you know dad issues. Kind of. I mean, my dad is still alive, um, but I don't have a relationship with him, and he is very tied into my music because you know I, I started playing violin back in you know elementary school, and that helped me. To when I eventually when he taught me how to play guitar and so I have a complicated relationship with my dad and um so that kind of resonated with me on another level like you're talking about because you know that's he's gone to her he's gone and to me he's gone a lot and but the one thing that I that we have is that music you know when I yeah. when I think about my dad I know that there's that bond over music whether or not you know, um, it's you know whether or not me, him and I are ever gonna be best friends or not is probably not. But yeah. So that was our segment, Dad there's issues. A very, there's a very personal thing. I, I I was about to play a, a drop, and I didn't know how you'd respond to it. So I, I was gonna be like, "Well, I got what I paid for." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that like. <laughs> I didn't pay for anything. Uh, but yeah, thanks again to Mayhem, uh, yep. Comics. James and Katie over at uh, Mayhem. Um, they've actually so here's wh- something really funny because they used to have it out. Uh, like I came in for the first f- month, I s- I'd say I came in at the same time because I didn't have a, a daytime job, so I would go in on Wednesday, like you know, twelve one o'clock something like that. And uh, I work every Wednesday now, so I go in there when I can, usually after work. And today, some days, it's like after five. So, um, and there were a couple of days when I went in on Wednesday when either one or both wasn't there. So, um, they actually started just uh, putting it aside, like, as soon as they open on Wednesday. So, whenever I come by, it's it's ready. Well, there you go. <laughs> Once again. Which uh, is pretty awesome. So, thank you, guys. Big thanks to uh, Mayhem. Uh, we're not doing it next week. We'll get to that after the drop. Uh, but what I mean by that is we're going to be talking about Carter's book next week. Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, doing the Mayhem comic, we're going to dedicate that segment to uh, Carter's book. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, maybe I'll get a signed copy. Who knows? Yeah. But what if I don't like it? And then he, he makes me a signed copy. Then I'm going to feel real bad. No. I mean, if your brother is anything like you, I would probably like it. So Yeah, it's uh, um, it just, okay, yeah, he's... Imagine me, but um, more responsible and more... Uh, oh, so an adult. Basically. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did, was it mean? I don't know. Was it? No, it's about... That's a, Would you say it's... Brilliant! I think because, <laughs> I, I think because I'm the younger uh, kid that I've kind of... I've been able to get away with more fuck-ups. And <laughs> I'm glad we got out of that segment and you said... <laughs> you said no, but I'm saying like... Yeah. Uh, but... Um, I, I think he's always kind of felt a responsibility to take care of me also. Yeah. So I think I have way more leeway than he does, real or imagined. Does that make sense? I guess. I don't know. I have a lot more lee- I, I have a lot more going. leeway to be childish than he does. Okay. Well. And that leeway Tyler. Whether that be We real haven't or done it in a while. Long Rock in the back. Like yeah. I, got paid for. Yeah. I thought I could do that in, Shoot. in the effect, but it didn't work. Shoot. I'm sorry. Do it again. I got what I paid for. That's it. 
Oh, kind of. In the very little you bit. Son of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> Throw my phone against the wall. Piece of shit. Is it still doing it? Tyler, uh, we're doing the I long box. Okay. What are we doing? What are we doing today? Who's going first? Is it me? Is it you? I don't care. You don't even have one. You're the first. Yes, I do. Uh, you know what? You go first because I, I just, I can't fucking handle this Gary Shandin- what the Chandelier. What is your problem? Gary Shandling, R.I.P. Jesus. I was trying to make fun of his name. I'm like, well, he's dead. You shouldn't. Make so fun of Gary name. Shandling uh, is uh, one of the premier comics of the '80s. Um, he came up. Um, he actually started writing for. Um, oh, what the fuck was it? Ah, uh, shit. Off to a great start, Tyler. <laughs> no, because I didn't know this about him, but he started writing for like comedy shows and comedians out in, uh, um, out in L.A. And he's from um, that's how Jed Apatow He's from Arizona, started. and you his his brother died um, when he was ten, and his brother was thirteen. His brother had cystic fibrosis, Damn. and his mom kind of went crazy a little bit. So. But here's something I didn't know that's about why, him. That's why he's a good comedian. He was way into like health food and like all of these probiotics and all that stuff, like way back in the seventies and shit. So like he was, he's always been a med. But he started taking making these diaries. He started journaling, and he has like thirty years of like all these journals and stuff to take from for this this two part. It's like five hours basically. But Judd Apatow. Oh yeah, it's on who HBO. Was, who was one of the writers on the Larry Sanders show, and basically for a time, his Hollywood mom and dad were Gary and his his. Well, w- Judd Apatow did the same thing he did. Judd Apatow would write jokes mm. for Adam Sandler and shit like that, and like yeah, so he was kind of just writing jokes for people at the time. But he got he got his. Start. I want to clarify what I said. Apatow was also a stand-up. I want to clar- his own. I want to clarify his brother dying and his mom going crazy. I said that's why he's a good comic. Mm. It's true. The best comedians come from very shitty childhoods. Well, I I, I watched the it, it's it's called the Zen Diaries of Gary Shandling. And here's the thing: I I I was a big fan when I was a kid. Um, it 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 was it started on Showtime, which I didn't know. I always thought it was on Fox, but back when Fox started, it was like four or five shows, and none of them were Simpsons. And um, they were Tracy Ullman show. Yes, uh, that was one of the shows. And then the Simpsons got the story. There was a couple of sitcoms, and one of them was it's Gary Shandling's show. And uh, from what I understand now, they were reruns from a Showtime show that Fox had purchased to fill time. But um, I remember watching it, and I loved it because it was so out there compared to any other sitcom. Because he knew he was a TV character. And he would say things to the audience, and he would go out like into the audience, and he would go behind the cameras and stuff sometimes, and be like, "Okay, let's speed this up or whatever." It's it's a great groundbreaking show. Yeah, and um, it's like when uh, Daffy Duck fought the guy with the eraser. The Larry Sanders show is also a groundbreaking show in a lot of ways, and he was a part of that. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I'm talking about this is because I've been very. As I've gotten older, I've tried to be more and more mindful of my my moods, of my temperament, of my uh, state of mind, of my mental health. I've been trying to be more mindful of it so I don't, like, f- lose my shit or, you know, fly off the handle or whatever, you know? Now... Fuck you! Yeah. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not somebody. I, I'm. I'm not violent. I've never have been. But I yell and I. I. I scream and I. And I. And you know. I just. I'm. I'm an ass. I'm a jackass. When I lose my shit, I'm a complete jackass. That's a drop. By and the way. God forbid if anybody ever sees it or has to experience it. You know. And I. I just don't want to. I don't want to be part of my life. And. I've already been my. I've already like I said been practicing this being mindful. And that is literally just knowing how you are inside and just being aware, like, if, if a flare-up's coming or whatever, you you deal with it before it comes so you don't fly off the handle and then feel bad about it later. You you deal with it. You deal with those feelings. Why am I pissed? Do I need to be pissed? No? Then, sh- okay, move on. Let's have a good day. And I find this thing on Hulu. Um, sorry, on uh, HBO Max. And um, it's great because... Excuse you, it's just Max. Whatever, <laughs> um, but it's great because I had just purchased a couple of the episodes of uh, It's Gary Shandling's show on Prime, and just so I could watch it again, remember what it was like, and then I found this thing. So now I'm going to start watching the Larry Sanders show. But the point is, is that I'm learning a lot about this comedian who I thought I knew a lot about, but I didn't. 
And it's a really revealing look, like Jim Carrey's uh, in it talking about, you know, um, you know, Bob Saget is in it. Like all these great comedians that we love, like are you know just great friends with Shandling and all this. And um, it's it's just really it's enhanced how I've already started living my life with this mo- this this mantra of mind mindfulness mindlessness. <laughs> That's oh, what I think of these. Only when I'm watching Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, that's what I think of these Did liberal cucks. Did you see this cucks. week's episode, by the way? Wa- I'm you watching. You fucking it. idiot. Anyway. <laughs> we, ju- we literally started the show talking about how much time we have. <laughs> this is cutting out a day to watch stuff, to right? do this podcast. God damn it. We could um, be watching Ted Lasso right now. No, but it's just awesome that like this somehow came about around the same time that I've already been living my life this way, and it's helping me. Like I've started eating healthier. I'm I'm really really trying to quit smoking. I've started, um, you know, not not drinking as much sugar um, and as much soda as I do. I'm trying. He says I, drinking a Mountain Dew to start the show. <laughs> I, I drink a little glass. Hey, you're of it. trying. You're trying. The point is, is that I'm being I'm aware of it. Yes, and that's half the battle. G.I. Joe. Joe, but <laughs> that's a drop. Right. The worst G.I. Joe ever. Uh, no, it's just really cool that that came about at a time, and I'm just really excited, and I haven't finished it. There's about an hour left in the second one. But if you're a fan of 80s comedy and stand-up and stuff, go watch it. It's a, gr- it's a great way. Yes! I like how I made you agree with yourself. It's it's just it's a great insight into a lot of the comedy scene like in the eighties and like, you know, in Hollywood and all that stuff and you know, writing and, and different you know. Uh Brad Gray was his representation and anything you see that happened in the nineties probably was produced by Brad Gray and Bernie Brillstein. No shit. Mr. Show, Brad Gray, Bernie Brillstein. Anyway, um yeah, I really liked shows that were Pew Pew Quip, Pew Pew Quip. The point is, is that if you liked something that came out in the 90s and it was on TV, you probably are a fan of Brillstein Gray, which is funny because Shandling sued the shit out of him. Mm. But that's, you got to watch the documentary. Anyway. Are you done? I guess. Tyler. Tyler. So. So. I was going to say, the Zen. Say, the Zen. Diaries of Gary Shandling. <laughs> All right, That's now. a drop. That, yeah. Yeah, here's my uh here's Who cares? mine. Nobody cares. Oh. <laughs> I want to talk about Reacher. Reacher. I want to talk about Reacher. I want to talk about Reacher. 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 Yeah, uh so I my wife and I just watched the uh, complete like eight episode first season mm. of uh, Amazon show called Reacher. So it's based on the Jack Reacher books. Can this, I ask you a question? Did yeah, you, guys, you fucker. What? Did you I guys, never talked. No, I did talk during your second. Did one. you watch, uh, did you ever see the Tom Cruise movie? Yeah, we saw both of them. Because he had two. He did. He had, I only he, saw the first one. Yeah. The first which one, I didn't mind. The first one's good. But I understand that he's way out of proportion for the yes, character. Uh, according to the book. He's a Alan, monster. Alan Richson is the build that's the, i've that's seen the so guy bad. on the ads yeah okay good and okay. it's funny because they reference him a few times and one of them he goes like this fucking ape is what he called him and then he's like well you can you can't go around attacking people like that you're not like our friend that's a eight foot tall 600 pound gorilla yeah but yeah he's huge and um it's funny because my wife i had seen alan richson who is the lead who is jack reacher in this i had seen him previously in blue mountain state Oh, okay. Where he plays a star linebacker named Thad Castle. Okay. And he is fucking hilarious in that show. He is the like the best thing about that show consistently. Yeah. And it's funny to me because seeing him, it's kind of like a weird break. And granted, give Alan Richardson credit because when you look at that dude, it's easy to sti- like typecast him as someone like The Rock or some of these like big hulking action stars mm. but this dude's got range because jack reacher is totally different than thad castle yeah. where like there was just one episode that they did called the drug olympics where they all lost a game so like we need to all just hunker down in the in the house and we're going to do all these different drugs and it's going to help bond the team or whatatever oh and this he, is blue mountain state i yeah, was gonna yeah, say blue mountain state. reacher what yeah no no sorry blue mountain state and <laughs> he is so funny and like at one point and like he'll be he was doing something 
and he was doing things and he's like, okay, guys, no teams. And they're like, and then one of the guys was like, it's football. I think we should at least have two teams. Like they're playing backyard football with each other. And he's like, all right, fine. And then he's like running and he's got his pads on, no jersey. And he just fucking whacked out of his mind on drugs. And the, there's this girl that, oh God, I'm going too deep in this episode. But there's just a moment where he sees this person and he thinks it's a monster because he's fucked up on drugs and he just goes ah! like he lets out this big girly squeal and it's like to see that and then watch this intimidating character that is jack reacher beat the fuck out of people and i'm like wow what a change but no the show itself uh yeah i i liked the tom cruise movies i never i've never read the books but i i've Me seen neither. those tom yeah. cruise and those tom cruise movies are good they, yeah they're not bad um, at all no but this one's interesting the first one was fucking the Weird. Jack, the way I, I I look at it as it's Lee Child is like doing his version of a detective story because Jack Reacher's character is a military cop uh, who's now a civilian, but it's just funny to me because it's a series of books and it's like so you're just gonna the shtick is he just keeps getting rope into these random fucking cases because like this one starts with him getting accused for a murder and this this first season is based on the first book. And so it kind of spirals out of there and you find a big thing. And so if you like like detective stuff, if you like like police procedural type stuff, I think you'd really like this show. But what it does surprise what it does really well is the dialogue. I think the dialogue, I, however it is from the books, I don't know. But there's just things when the, when the movie or when the show really works for me is when you can see Reacher because again, it's nice, and I think this is the way the character was made, to see this big hulking guy who thinks a doofus be smartest guy in the room. And he's yeah. always the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. And he does like the Columbo, like the detective Columbo things. Or, see, I or, love Columbo. Or like Sherlock Holmes thing where he describes... You know, e- where, where one, he, one last thing. Where, where, where he can describe everything and how he came to his conclusions. And he's like, you know, and, and just seeing that. And then it's fun throughout the show where he's talking to the cop the Finley uh, his name's Finley he's the cop character he's this black detective in in the south mm-hmm. G- southern georgia um and they do an interesting thing where they they don't they kind of lean into him being black in a sense of like well you obviously look different than a lot of people here what are you doing here you know mm-hmm. this whole story like there's one part where he is trying to find this guy and he gets into he breaks into his house but he goes in with his gun drawn cuz he thinks he's my the the corrupt people might have got to him or whatever and he goes in, and some neighbor he doesn't see sees him, calls the cops. They come in and beat the fuck out of him because he's. They think he's this black. They don't say it, but it's also like they came in and attacked him. And then as he's spitting up blood and like wiping blood from his nose in this holding cell, they're letting him out. And they're like, "You should have told us a cop." And he's like, "You didn't give me the fucking chance." Mm-hmm. He didn't say fucking, but because he doesn't curse, but. Uh, that's a whole thing too. It's like uh, cur- uh, swearing shows a weak mind and a weak attitude, but then later he'll say like fucking stuff. They'll like get him to cuss. But like the characters, I think the cast works really well. I think Alan Richardson does a really great job of, like I said, having that presence, being that action star, but then also being smart and being. It it, it does a great job of balancing the more noir detective police procedural stuff, but then also at times being a very violent show like some of the action and violence like he is snapping arms and legs and it's like oh my god like one point he kills two guys that were chasing him and they're like the part the, the part of this whole thing and he's shoving their bodies into this trunk and he can't get the other guy to fit so he's literally like like snapping this dude's legs breaking bones in different ways to get him into the trunk and then so like the show has moments of really dark humor like that that i really love i love reacher uh season two is i think coming out this year i know they're filming it right now so it might come out this year but next year i really dig it. it's only eight episodes um which i think is generally kind of the sweet spot especially for hour-long shows um but yeah that's that's mine i liked reacher can't wait to uh see more of that woohoo Woo-hoo. Long box. Get it on. 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 Box. Uh, box. Uh, box. Uh, box. I'm trying to see what other ones we have. I'm trying to see what other ones we have. I'm trying to see what other ones we have. I'm trying to see what other ones we have. I'm trying to see what other ones we have. We're doing this live on there. Yes, we are, you bitch. Why am I so mean to you? What is so. What the fuck? Hey, now. Take off your pants. 
This is how I seduce. This is the seducing version. Well, if you need to seduce someone, we're here to help. I said, hey, unbutton your shirt. You can leave your hat on. <laughs> the glasses down. <laughs> and the socks. And, and the socks, yeah. <laughs> Keep your socks on. My feet get cold. What? It's, it's good. It's good to grip on something if you're <laughs> you're getting a little oiled up. Listen, if you get in them silk sheets, you got no you got no why, leverage. Why is this the Chicago? I don't know. Kama Sutra. Chicago Sutra. Chicago Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> now what you're gonna that's do? That's our new episode. What you're gonna do series. is uh, put her ankles on your first on your thing you gotta shoulders. do is you gotta have some knack worst okay you're gonna first need a stretch all right first of all have a whole scratch that. sex swing made out of knack Scra- hey clear the clip clear the chalkboard the okay. first thing you're gonna yeah. need to do is limber up okay yeah because we're gonna do a lot first you're gonna <laughs> the chicago sutra also includes having a dog you also gotta make sure that go? the lady calls you dead cat at all times I gosh, you know, I tell oh, you, Ditka. you you got a limit. You're up. my Ditka. Up and love shopping with Jake and Tyler. <laughs> <laughs>